Hello boys and girls, welcome to my show Imperfect Murders. I'm your host, Ms. Doe. Today we are here to talk about a special case. And I know that all of our cases are special, but this one is special because from the very beginning, the search for polyclass was conducted using the internet which had never been done before. Previously, missing child posters were blurry reproductions that were photocopied, faxed, and hand distributed. Come on, let's learn more about our girl Polly class. It was October the 1st, 1993. 12-year-old Polly Hannah class was having a slumber party when a strange man holding a knife entered her bedroom, tied up all the girls and put pillowcases over their heads. He told them to count to a thousand. The intruder then took a sobbing Polly off into the night. Her friends stood back to back trying to untie themselves. When that didn't work, one girl was able to bring her hands under her feet to free herself. The girls then awakened Polly's mother, who immediately called the police. A stranger had invaded a private home in Petaluma, CA, and snatched an innocent child from her very own bedroom. There were witnesses to tell this story. People in her hometown and throughout the world helped search for her. By the time Polly's body was found on December the 3rd, 1993, over 2 billion images of Polly class had been distributed worldwide. Like I said before, Polly's case was conducted using the internet from the very beginning. You know, in the past they were putting missing child photos on the milk cartons and we also have a case about the first kid who appeared on the male cartoon and you can click here and watch that case if you haven't watched it before. But this was 1993, the dawn of the information superhighway. The day after Polly was kidnapped, two Petaluma residents, Gary French and Bill Rhodes, contacted the police department to inform them that Polly's missing child posture could be digitized, resulting in a crisp, crisp, recognizable image. French and Rhodes were joined by a third person, syndicated computer columnist Larry Majet, who contacted several internet networks with worldwide clientele of more than 20 million users. Polly's crisp, recognizable, missing child poster soon received a far wider distribution than any previous missing child poster, which is one of the reasons why so many people know about Polly class. Gary French, Bill Rhodes, and Larry Majid introduced a huge technological innovation to the process of finding missing children. Since 1993, their innovation has helped find many, many missing ch children. In 1993, Time magazine published a story on this innovative use of technology titled A High Tech Dragnet. To this decade. <sighs> okay, okay. I'm not angry at myself at all. To this day. The Polyclass Foundation follows a path laid by these high-tech pioneers and continues to creatively use innovative technology in their child find operations. Now we will talk about the details and if you're still watching this, just know that I love you because no one watches more than two minutes of my video. So if you're here, thank you. Okay, that man was Richard Allen Davis. From now on, I will say his name. The intruder, you know. So, after Polly was kidnapped, over the next two months, about 
4,000 people helped search for class. TV shows such as 2020 and America's Most Wanted covered the kidnapping. And APD, APB, all poems bulletin with the suspect's information was broadcast within 30 minutes of the kidnapping. The broadcast, however, only went out over Sonoma County Sheriff's Channel 1. In a rural area of Santa Rosa, about 20 miles north of Petaluma, a babysitter on her way home noted a suspicious vehicle stuck in a ditch on her employer's private driveway. She phoned the property owner who decided to leave with her daughter. As she drove down the long driveway to Pythium Road, the owner passed Davis. She called 911 when she got to a service station and two deputies were dispatched on the call. The deputies did not know of the kidnapping or the suspect's description due to Sonoma Valley units being on Channel 3. The deputies ran Davis' driver, driver's license and license plate number, but they cam, came back with no ones or warrants. The deputies tried to convince the property owner to perform a citizen's stis arrest for trespassing. Under California law, a civilian may make an arrest for this type of misdemeanor. The property owner would have had to go to the car with the deputies and say, I arrest you. The deputies then would have taken Davis into custody. The property owner refused. If something like this happens to you, please don't refuse and go to that car and say, I arrest you. Because you will never know how important it is. So, I am really angry at this property owner. The deputies called for a tow truck to get Davis' car out of the ditch. They searched it thoroughly before the arrival of the tow truck and did not find evidence of anyone else in the car. The only possible violation was an open container of beer, but Davis was not driving at the time of the deputies' contact and mere possession of an open container was not illegal. Before Davis was... was allowed to leave, he was instructed to pour out the beer and the deputies filled out an FI, filed interrogation, card with his information and the FI card was filed. On November 28, 1993, the property owner was inspecting her property after loggers had partially cleared the property of trees. She discovered items that made her think they might have matched those used in the kidnapping. She called the sheriff's department to report her discovery, and deputies and crime scene investigators were dispatched. One of the items found, a torn pair of ballot leggings, was matched by the FBI crime laboratory to the other part of the leggings that were taken as evidence on the night of the kidnapping. Every view of calls in the area the day of the kidnapping turned up, turned up to contact with Davis, who had only been identified because both deputies had filled out and filed the FI card. Once the identity of Davis was revealed, his palm print at the scene of the kidnapping was also traced to him. Authorities had been unable to match the partial print earlier due to the poor quality of the print lab. The Sonoma County Sheriff's Department, in cooperation with Petaluma Police and the FBI, launched a search of the property and the Pythium Road area during a heavy rainstorm. The first two days of the search were kept as low key as possible, since Davis, Davis was under surveillance at an Indian ranch area near Ukiah, California. When nothing was found during the initial search and surveillance of Davis also produced no results, the decision was made to arrest him for the kidnapping of class. While Davis was being interrogated by Petaluma PD and the FBI, a massive search was launched on Friday, December the 3rd. The Sonoma County Sheriff's Department was assisted by over 500 search team members from 24 agencies, coming from as far away as Kern County, California, and Westchester County, Nevada. Nevada. Well, I realize that I've never pronounced that word before. 
The mutual aid effort was coordinated by the California State Office of Emergency Services, now known as the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services, FBI crime scene teams, and numerous other state and federal agencies. The search remains today as one of the largest ever conducted in California. The search continued through Saturday, December the 4th. The search effort produced other items of evidence but did not produce any evidence of human remains. The search was planned to continue on Sunday, December the 5th, but on the evening of December the 4th, they was confessed to kidnapping and murdering class and led investigators to her body. He had buried her in a shallow grave just off Highway 101, about a mile south of the city limits of Cloverdale, California. The grave site is about 28 miles and about 30 road miles from the search site. Although they was admitted to strangling class to death, he refused to give investigators a timeline of the events from October the 1st. Investigators thought he was fearful that both people who passed him would call the sheriff's department. It is believed that he killed her before the arrival of the beauties and hid her body in the thick brush on the hillside above where his car was stuck. He then waited for an undetermined period of time after being escorted back to Highway 12, about 1.5 miles from where his car was stuck and drove back up to retrieve her body. He was reportedly out of breath, sweating profusely despite being a cool night, and had twigs and leaves in his hair when contacted by the beauties. It is also believed that he had chosen the gravesite in advance, since it would not have been discovered by a casual observer. The gravesite area would be directly visible from Highway 101, but not the grave itself. He had to drive from the Indian Renteria in Ukraine once a week to meet with parole officer and he would have seen any police activity in the area. After a long tumultuous trial, Davis was convicted on June the 18th, 1996 of first degree murder and four special circumstances. Robbery, burglary, kidnapping, and loud act on a child in class staff. A San Jose Superior Court jury returned a verdict of death. At his formal sentencing by a judge, Davis provoked national outrage by taunting his victim's family, extending both middle fingers at a courtroom camera and later saying that class's last words just before he killed her were that her father molested her. Judge Thomas Hastings sentenced Davis to death by a lethal injection and remarked, It is very easy for me to pronounce this sentence given your revolting behavior in this courtroom. Davis is currently on death row at San Quentin State Prison in Marin County, California. Having survived an apparent drug overdose while in prison and attacks on him by several other prisoners, Davis is now in solitary confinement confinement and continues to assist his attorneys in various appeals and has more appeals ahead of him before the sentence passed can be carried out. Now, let me tell you the most heartbreaking part, at least for me. Two weeks after Polly's kidnapping, her mother, M. Nicole, said, I have a daughter out there without shoes. I don't know if it affects you as much as it did to me, but you know, for me, little details are important and heartbreaking. I know we all cared about Polly, we all wanted to find her alive, we all loved her, but this little girl would always be the beloved daughter of her very own parents. Another fact, a candle burned in her window for nine weeks. The flame was extinguished when they were told her remains had been found. Polly's missing child poster had been spotted in 
Mogadushi Gishu and Nairobi. When her remains were found, the headline of a newspaper in Munich, Germany was America Cries. Polly is dead. People were stunned by their lost sense of personal security. The child had been kidnapped from her very own bedroom. They felt betrayed by a legal system that was supposed to protect their families and could not manage to keep a repeat offender from harming yet again. The press called her America's child. It is also appropriate to call her the world's first internet child. What happened to Polly became known to so many through the internet. Around the world, adults and children mourned Polly and all missing children. Now I will read something. Her memorial service, An Affair of the Heart, was held on December the 9th, 1993, shortly after her remains were found. So many people and dignitaries wanted to attend that the lottery had to be held to assign seats. Loudspeakers were set up outside the church. The streets were packed with thousands of grieving search team volunteers, participating law enforcement professionals and police friends and some schoolmates. Sadness prevailed. John Bay sang Amazing Race, Linda Rundstedt sang Somewhere Out There, the Casa Grande High School Chorus sang Come to My Garden, and James Locke, a soloist from the San Francisco Opera, sang Lode Dominum. Elected officials spoke. Congresswoman Lynn Woolsey, Senator Diane Weinstein, Governor Pete Wilson. Spiritual teacher Rem Das spoke. There was a eulogy and a message from the family. The Santa Rosa Children's Choir sang I'm Going Up a Yonder. Actress Winona Ryder, who had been raised in Petaluma, offered a $200,000 reward for class safe return during the search. Ryder starred in a film version of Little Women after class death and dedicated to it to her memory because it had been her favorite book. I love Winona Ryder so much and that's why I also wanted to add this fact and I think it was an important part, part of this case. Class's body was cremated and her ashes spread over the Pacific Ocean by her friends and family. In the wake of the murder, Class's father, Mark Class, became a child advocate and established the Class Kids Foundation. He has made himself available to parents of kidnapping children and has appeared frequently on Larry King Live, C CNN, Headline News, and Nancy Grace. He is also pet portrayed in the Elizabeth Smart story by Barry Flatman as meeting the Smarts and informing them he was working with Fox News. The All Poets Bulletin was broadcast on the CHP, <laughs> California Highway Patrol channel, which only CHP radios could receive. CHP practice changed after the case. The radio system was upgraded and such bulletins are now broadcast on all police channels through a centralized 911 dispatch system. Five years after class murder, a performing arts center was named in her, her honor in Petaluma, which has since been closed. In the wake of the murder, politicians in California and other U.S. states supported three strikes laws and California's Three Strikes Act was signed into law on March the 8th, 1994. Now, I will give you some sources, so if you'd like to watch and learn more about Polly's case, you can take a look at them. Investigation Discovery reenacted the kidnapping and murder in Motives and Murder, Cracking the Case, Sue to Polly Class, Season 3, Episode 2, 2014. The A&E television series American Justice released the episode Free to Kill the Polly Class Murder. The episode exposes the challenges of the panel system to rehabilitate inmates. 
Davis had been in and out of jail, his convictions ranging from kidnapping to burglary. The episode originally aired October the 23rd, 1996. The Discovery Channel crime series The FBI Files' first episode's topic was the polyclass case. The episode reveals the details of the FBI agent's collection of evidence and their hunt for the criminal and originally aired October the 20th, 1998. Another thing to mention, Polly's mom's wish. She said, I would like her to be remembered. Her story should result in the community coming together in a way that shows just the very best of Humanity. Well, that's also my wish. That's why I have a remembering channel dedicated to those people. So I think I'm I'm like Polly's mom. Like we have the same wish, and that, yeah, that's it. Moms and dads, aunts and uncles, grandmothers and grandfathers throughout the world are actively engaged in, engaged in vigorous action to keep children safe and help find missing children. I think I've mentioned everything, but if I forgot something, you may always like comment and also if I said something wrong you may always correct me by writing a command sometimes commands get turned off because of the graphic content and i'm so sorry about it the only thing i ask you to do to do is to be positive because this is a remembering channel and negativity goes against with my goal so as soon, as long as you are positive you can do anything on this channel and i think that's all but before we go if you're not a subscriber yet please subscribe to my channel and be a family member of us because we're here to remember people and why wouldn't you be one of them one of the people who remembers that from the victims. I keep saying wrong things. I hate English sometimes, but I guess you're used to it now <laughs> because it will be a year next month. And since the very beginning, I keep saying wrong things. I keep pronouncing words and some of you don't like that fact and some of you are so kind and trying to help me but thank you thank you thank you thank you and have a life full of stars till then